Hey there, I'm Verity Songon and this is the Confident CEO podcast, the show that takes you behind the scenes of starting and running your small or not so small business. We will cut through the misinformation and bad advice about starting and running a business and give you actionable tips and advice that you can implement to grow, scale and achieve your business goals. Let's dive in. Hello everybody and welcome back to another review of The Apprentice. I kind of realised I forgot to, well I didn't forget, my content calendar has been absolutely jam-packed for the last however many weeks and I didn't realise that I've now done, we've now had three more episodes of The Apprentice which I have not reviewed which is awful because I was going to do them weekly Um, but yeah, it just, with my content calendar, it's quite challenging because the episodes come out on a Thursday night and then it's the weekend because I don't do, um, I have the, um, I have the baby at home with me on Friday and then it's the weekend when I've obviously, you know, it's family time and all this kind of thing. And then before I know it, it's Thursday night again and there's another episode. So yes, I'm completely behind. So in this episode, we are going to be doing three episodes. We're going to do the cartoons. Brighton discount buying and electric motorbike advertising as well. And I hope I can remember all of the episodes. So that could be interesting as well. But yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to review those, those fun episodes. And the other interesting thing that I'm doing is I'm recording this on, um, Instagram live at the moment. So this is something that I've actually seen a few podcasters do, which is, you know, when they're recording their episodes, putting them on Instagram live as well. So I'm not going to say that this is what I'm going to do for every solo episode, but I'm going to try it out, see what happens. And yeah, but in the meantime, let's dive in. So first of all, cartoons. Oh my God. So this is a few episodes ago now. The cartoon episodes, I was wetting myself as a mum of children. Oh, you could be a mum dog, I suppose. I was going to say, well, who else would you be a mum of? But as a mum of children, I can say safely that I have watched my fair share of kids TV programs. We've done Sphere the First, Doc McStuffins, those big favourites in our house. Bluey is currently is currently a fun favourite. I love Bluey. I could go on about Bluey for ages. I think the mum and dad are hilarious and I think they're incredibly relatable to, I'm not sure what that tells me, uh, you know, tells you about me as a parent, but let's get on to talking about The Apprentice and cartoons. And all I can say is have they never watched kids TV before? Oh my God. It was just, it was something else, wasn't it? It was just something else. And I mean, the one where they had the kid going down the slide and the kid in the wheelchair, they had no hands and feet. I just, I I don't know. I, that just confused me so much. I like, I was like, what are you doing? Like, if you're not going to have a certain body parts on a character they kind of need to own that so like what I mean by that is there are you know characters I can't even think now of a specific example but like okay so there's one on CBBS. I think it's called number um color blocks or number blocks or something but basically it is a shape like a triangle with arms and feet so it doesn't have a body per se but they kind of just own that fact that it doesn't have a body because it is just a shape. My point is, is that it, if you're not going to have a certain thing, it kind of needs some kind of ownership of that. Or I don't know. It was just, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not like they were talking about the characters not having hands and feet. It was like a genuine, we just forgot to give the characters hands and feet. And I just thought it was just insane like it just it didn't make any sense it's not even like how in the new lego friends which have just been um relaunched i think this is amazing by the way they've got a character who has um a i'm not sure if it's below or above elbow amputee they're in a below um if they're i can't even talk if they're a below or above elbow amputee but you get my point and one of their arms they don't have a forearm and hand i think that's amazing from an inclusivity point of view but they weren't making that point in the um, in the Apprentice episode when they were making that cartoon. And, but, oh, my God, it was just, it was awful. It was, oh, my God, it was just, I don't know, it was mad. I don't really understand that. I didn't really understand that episode at all. I did not understand the thought process behind it. And I had to agree with the experts when they said that they just felt the whole messaging was really patronising because I thought it was really patronising as well. 
you know, to kind of just turn around to somebody in a wheelchair and be like, oh, I'll change the game for you. I don't know. I just thought it was, yeah, there was no empowering empowerment over it. I just thought it was ridiculous, personally. Oh my gosh. Right. What else did they have on that episode? I'm just going to click on and hopefully not turn on, um, turn on watching McCall at the same time I play her. So yeah, incomplete characters. They had to go and do the pitch. I don't know. It, the whole thing was just, do you know what? I can't even say anything more about that episode. Let's move on. Let's talk about Brighton because this is when they go and do the discount buying task. I don't know why, but this has to be my favorite, favorite episode that they do of all of the Apprentice episodes. I just, I love it. They go into a city, they're given a list of things that they need to find and they need to get them for the, you know, for the best price. And then what they need to do is it, well, what happens if they don't get an item, then they get forfeited for that and they get fined, fined, quote unquote, for that as well. But yeah, the discount buying episode is always my favorite. So they were in Brighton, which so Brighton and Hove I didn't actually know until this episode that it is technically called Brighton and Hove which I yeah every day is a school day but they have this list of tasks they have to go off oh my god the first I was screaming at the television like literally screaming at the television when they were saying about 80% of them said I can't read a map and I was like how can you not read a map and I don't know am I showing my age so I'm a millennial and I'm in my 30s and I can read a map and okay fine I didn't grow up with Google Maps because Google like didn't exist um which is quite sad when I was a child but oh my god I just I couldn't understand how they can't read how they couldn't read a map and that just it really stressed me out and they were like oh yeah I've just I've got no idea what this means I'm like how do you not know how this means like even if you've never sat down with an ordnance survey map because not many people do let's face it like surely you've played a board game where there's been some kind of map on the board game or you've done like, even when you just look at Google Maps, it still, like, lays out the streets and stuff. I don't know. I was just stressed that nobody could read a map. I thought it was bizarre, to be quite honest. And, yeah, I'm going to make sure that the kids, my kids, know how to read a map. It was weird. But anyway, that aside. So the other thing that I wanted to pick up on, although no, that's it first. The other thing I was screaming at the TV for was that nobody seemed to know what a barometer was. It sounds like I grew up on a ship or something, knowing, uh, talking about barometers and ordnance survey maps. I didn't. I hate the sea, actually. I don't like going on the sea. Um, not in a boat anyway. But yeah, I couldn't also understand how none of them knew what a barometer was. I don't know. To be honest with you, that episode just made me feel really, really old. And I'm not old. I'm only in my early 30s. But the episode made me feel really old because I was like, how do you not know what these things Ah, now granted, I didn't know what all of them were, like the saffron desert rose or the desert rose, saffron, whatever it was called. Didn't know what that was. Um, you know, there were quite a few things that I didn't know, but yeah, I just it made me feel old when they were like, I don't know what a barometer is, I don't know what this is. Oh, yeah. But anyway, let's move on. So yeah, the Brighton discount buying, I just thought I, I thought their strategy was quite interesting. I liked the team when they said they were going to start outward and work inwards, I thought that was incredibly strategic. I thought that made a lot of a lot of sense. The team that just kind of stuck within a few streets, I thought that was a little bit nonsensical to me. That didn't, yeah, that didn't make too much sense to me. Um, but that kind of, you know, that is that is what it is. But yeah, the Brighton discount buying. Oh my gosh, I just thought it was, I just thought it was funny. I really did. As I said, this was one of my favourite. This is one of my favourite tasks. Just pressed it on BBC I play. So sorry if you just like heard um, heard that playing. Um, I think also the other thing that confuses me is I never understand why people, like people know what kind of tasks are coming up in The Apprentice. Like surely nobody goes into The Apprentice having not watched previous seasons of The Apprentice. They know what's coming up. and yeah okay they might not know the exact specific task but do know what is coming up in terms of you know the type of task so this is the type of they know that there's going to be some kind of buying task they know that they're going to have to read a map so why don't you just learn how to read a map i don't know it just it just confuses me but once again well the other thing that i'll pick up on is again they had like 20 minutes to get ready and i just don't know how these how any of them, how these contestants, how any of them do this. They need to release a course 
I've decided this is this should this would actually yeah this is my Dragon's Den idea so I'm switching franchises slightly but this is my Dragon's Den idea to create an online course where you are taught how to get up get ready look absolutely camera ready and fabulous and out the door in 20 minutes and bonus points if we can like maybe just uh, extend it to 30 minutes and the kids are included in that because I've got no idea how they get ready that quickly. It's absolutely incredible. So yeah, that's um, that's for the Brighton discount buying. And also, oh my God, onto the electric motorbike one last week. What was that? I have got so much to say on, on this. Right, first of all, I'm gonna say I love motorbikes. My brother's a petrol head, my uncle's a petrol head. We've got a lot, yeah, people like motorbikes in my family. I used to have a motorbike. Um, I used to ride a baby blade. Very cute. If you know what a fire blade is, it's a beautiful bike. And I had the 125cc version of that. Um, I wanted to do my bigger bike license. I wanted to get um, a bigger bike. But then family life doesn't, it, it didn't really work out for in, in the scheme of things. But the point is, I love, 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 love motorbikes. And I'm not the biggest fan of the idea of electric motorbikes, not because I'm not into like the environmental credentials and stuff. I get all of that, don't get me wrong, but more because if you've ever ridden a motorbike, for me, it's just, it's the noise, it's the sound, it's the whole experience that I don't really get how you can replicate with an electric motorbike but that is personal opinion I'm not telling anybody that I don't agree with electric motorbikes because like I said you need to be environmentally friendly and you know save the planet all that kind of stuff get that completely but they were given an electric motorbike to brand and advertise and you had one team who I'm not really sure if they like trying to make it sexy, trying to make electric motorbikes sexy for petrol heads. Oh my God, that's an entire conversation because you know, if people want, oh, how, where do I even start? Right, basically, if you know, the petrol heads that I know are into racing or some kind of like motocross, maybe some motorsports or just like, you know, a whole variety of things. And I'm sure there's probably people who are petrol heads who are disagreeing with that statement, but I'm obviously just going on personal experience there. And, you know, it's not moving. It's not, what am I trying to say? Them not wanting to get an electric bike is not because it's not sexy. It's because it doesn't fulfill the requirement that they need their bike for. So I don't know if anyone's ever gone and seen motocross racing. I've watched a lot. I've never participated in motocross racing, but I've watched a lot of motocross, motocross racing. I cannot see an electric motorbike fulfilling the job that's needed of a bike in order to get around a motocross track same with sand racing saying you know with all these different things so i think they completely missed the the mark there and the point when they were like oh petrol heads won't buy an electric motorbike because it's not sexy it's like, no it's probably because it's not really fitting the idea or the need and then they went and shot it at like their um their advert in a city I don't know the whole thing to me just didn't just didn't work I didn't think they really got the the mark I thought it was a shame that they didn't listen to I can't think of what his name is now but um the guy who was the PM I thought it was a shame they didn't listen to his idea about going um with the play on words with the was it Kathy Kathy I thought that was clever but yeah I get that a lot of the team didn't didn't get it but I thought that was a shame I just thought the whole thing was a bit anyway Let's move on. Let's go to talk about the other team, which I just thought was a complete shambolic mess. What the hell was going on with that logo? That logo made me howl with laughter because it reminded me of, bear with me. Okay, anyone who was at school in the 90s, do you remember that there was like one computer in the whole of the school and it had nothing on it apart from a word processing, um, you know, word processing thing program I mean and paint it honestly reminded me of being eight years old in the 90s at school and being able to use paint oh my god it was just it was awful 
simple. It didn't mean anything. I mean, Shazia, come on, girl, in what universe? And I loved it because on the um, Apprentice You're Fired episode, she was still standing by it. And I've got to love that. I've got to love the dedication where she was like, yeah, this is absolutely, uh, you know, it's amazing. It wasn't. It was awful. I would never buy a zip. Zip, zip zap not zip zap a zip zap I wouldn't ever buy a zip zap honestly the zip zap it makes me think of a child's scooter I don't know why that's just that's what I get from the name I don't think electric motorbike at all and then it had like the racing flags so it was like well, what are you trying to sell here the whole and it had lightning bolts I, I, I loved it because it was so bad in my opinion I loved it because it gave me this real nostalgic feeling of what an eight or nine year old would have created on paint in the 90s it was just it was god awful just god awful and then the oh my god the advertising where they had avi just he's there in a suit with this yellow bucket hat to welcome his mate when they it looks like they've like turned up at some stately home or something and they're like yeah this is amazing and then they just walk off it was just bizarre what person is going to look at that advert see avi looking all enthusiastic wearing a business suit and a yellow bucket hat and going yep that's it i need to go buy a zip zap i just i don't even know where to where to begin with that it was awful 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 and yeah and actually on that point i don't think the other team did amazingly with their advertising either because he was walking the bike into a restaurant who does that how many times have you been sat in a restaurant and somebody just wheels their motorbike in no it's like have they never seen a motorbike advert before it just it frustrated me because okay don't get me wrong I don't watch a lot of adverts anymore because I watch a lot of like you know Netflix and streaming services and all those kind of things so there's not the adverts there to watch anymore but I'm not being funny surely they've seen an advert before surely they've seen an advert for a motorbike and they haven't just seen somebody wheel it into the restaurant i don't know it i just thought it was really really bizarre i mean if no, even if nobody could ride the motorbike like couldn't they just have somebody revving it or just something i don't know i thought it was very i thought it was very bizarre but you know that kind of that is what it is either way i don't think either team did very well with advertising the with advertising the motorbike um yeah so it was just like I said I just thought it was bizarre do I think Shazia was the right person to go unfortunately I'm very sorry Shazia but yes I do, I do think I, I quite like Shazia do you know what the, I thought I liked the most about her is I thought she was so pragmatic for wearing flat shoes which I know sounds ridiculous but every single season I've watched The Apprentice and I'm like why does no one wear flat shoes because I would be the person wearing flat shoes and I love the fact that she kind of flew the flag for people wearing wearing flat shoes so yes I thought she was very pragmatic I like that but no the logo was awful the direction of the advertising campaign was awful I just I couldn't stand by any of it so unfortunately yes I did agree with Shazia with Shazia going um I think it's interesting because I think we're starting to see a lot more personality come out in the episode, you know, now into episode five, episode six is coming out next week. So that will be, that will be interesting. I still like Victoria. I still like Rochelle. I think that they have got a lot of, um, I think they're really capable women. So I'm interested to see where they're going. Um, Simba, he was, you'll remember me saying that he was one of my favorite at the beginning. I'm still... I'm still interested to see where he's gonna where he's gonna go. I didn't think when he was PM, he was the most effective. I thought he just kind of let. Oh gosh, I can't think of her name now. Was it Marnie? Whoever the you know the girl with the blonde hair. I just felt like he let her take over, which was a shame because I do feel like he's got a lot to offer. So it'll be interesting whether or not he gets to the point where he's we're able to see him develop and offer more or whether or not it will get to, you know, he'll be fired before that. So yeah, I'm interested for episode six, which is on tomorrow, which is on tomorrow night. And I will be back with another review of that episode six. I'm hoping that, <laughs> that I'll actually get a chance to do episode six as an episode of the podcast and not like, you know, leave it, um, leave it too long so that I have to batch them again. But um, yeah, 
love to know your thoughts on The Apprentice. Are you enjoying it this season? Who are your people that you're keeping an eye on to to win or people that you're keeping an eye on because you just want them fired? So, yeah, looking forward to hearing from you and I will see you next episode. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Confident CEO podcast. Before you go, I would absolutely be overjoyed if you could take just two minutes to leave me a review in Apple Podcasts. Reviews are a great way to tell Apple Podcasts how much you enjoyed the show and it helps the algorithm to push out the podcast to more people, thereby helping us to help empower even more badass businesswomen to grow their inner CEO and grow to be the confident CEO of their business that they can be. I love to shout you out in your reviews as well. So you never know, you might be hearing your name on the podcast in the next episode. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.